All right, guys, you guys are welcome. Welcome. So we're about to go live on YouTube. Just give me one second. Let me go live so we can start. All right, guys. All right, so um, if you are unable to join on Zoom, please kindly go on YouTube. We are streaming live and everything is being recorded too as well. So it's been recorded here and it's also streaming live on YouTube. All right, so nice to have you guys. We currently have about 91 people on the call. I say welcome, welcome guys. So let me turn on my camera. So I want to know where you guys are calling in from. Like for me, I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. That's where I'm joining call from. So what about you? Let's know in the comment section. Abuja, Enugu, London, Benin, Bonacourt, Namibia, Lagos, Ghana, wow, Dubai. We have got a lot of people here. Got a lot of them. Cape Town, Somalia, Abia, Ogun State, Kenya, US, Virginia, Ireland, Sri Lanka. All right, next to have you all here, Detal, Nigeria, Jobo, South Africa, brother. Next to have you guys. I'm sure you all can see me clearly. So if you're on YouTube, drop it in the comment section on the chat, on the super chat, where you are joining us from. And so we can all, I can also read that out too as well, all right? Because I'm trying to like read comments from here and also to read comments from the other side, all right? So while we are waiting for other persons, we currently have 100 participants, all right, here. So I believe that's the maximum this my Zoom can take. So every other person just go join in on YouTube live stream. So let me just put uh, some couple of things together on my YouTube. While we are waiting, let me just put some things together there. I don't want them to feel left out.
All right, thank you guys for your patience. Now, we are all set and we could, let's roll. Uh -huh. Yeah. Today's series, I just want to explain, I just want to explain how the forex market work and how I look at it. So I'm going to be taking it from the beginner's perspective. So for those guys who are already like gurus in the house or who are already advanced, you have to really bear with us because this is uh, majorly for like beginners, all right? But I'll try as much as possible to add it up and not make you guys feel boring for those guys who already know what all of these things are. But I want to start with what is forex so that everyone in here can join in. Because I understand why yesterday I sent this link out most people told me that they're going to invite their friends who have been wanting to learn for us for all these years. So uh, obviously we have everyone in with different background of Forex knowledge and different shades right here. So let's take it from that perspective. So the first thing is I want to introduce myself. I'm Jeffrey Benson. I'm the founder of FirePeep. So the reason why I came up with this idea of FirePeep was to train traders to be able to trade for proprietary firm. But however, when I started, there was nothing like proprietary firm. That was back in less like four years ago. There was nothing like proprietary firm. Now, trust me, now is a very good time for traders to be alive because we are having new opportunities. A lot of people, we are getting recognized by nations, getting recognized. Like a lot of people are really adopting this forest. More people, the new people are understanding how forest works and they see, okay, people make money from this. They are seeing the Lamborghinis, seeing the life on Instagram, and on YouTube and all of that. And they are really finding it very, very, very interesting. And they are hopping in. And the more people hop on, the more it gets more interesting for each one of us. So that's why it's a great news. So um, my goal has just shifted to training people, young guys most especially, to make sure that they are profitable in the Forex market, that you can live off this, you can travel, trade in Forex, you can fulfill your dream, uh, you can fulfill your destiny, you can just go to school based on your Forex knowledge. All right, so I am happy to have you guys on board and thank you guys for taking our time to come for this beginner slash intermediate slash advanced class. So fire people, just as I've explained, we are all about learning, investing and trading and we also teach people on how to do the same thing. What is Forex? Forex trading was once only possible for banks and institutions. Yes, because of the money that was involved. You would need at least 40 million to $60 million in liquid funds. Now imagine trying to phone with a broker and they're asking you to go get 40 million to 60 million in a business you don't even know how it works. So <laughs> it's really crazy. So that's why not until of recent, only the big banks were allowed to play, all right? Today, people with a much smaller sum can engage in Forex trading. And that's because we now have brokers. Brokers are like your normal bank, your local bank, all right? local bank, before they open an account for you, they'll require you to give them some details like your valid ID card and your utility bill so that they can confirm your, your, your identity and also to confirm your address. So that's the reason why they ask for all of this. And so immediately they do that, you, you submit all of that to them. They're going to open a back office for you. In that back office, you can fund either using Bitcoin, either using PayPal or using Nera debit card or whatsoever debit card, US card, uh, Rand, Scar, anything, all of them, you can, they have various options that you can deposit with them, that can, they can use in depositing with them. And they also give you what they call leverage. Leverage, I'm going to be treating that in no time. So with that advent of leverage, you, don't, you no longer have to have up to like 40 million or 60 million before you're allowed to trade. And everything has been demystified. They also give you a login. They also make a platform available where you can log in, download MetaTrader 4 and all of those platforms where you can easily buy and sell. But now, what are the tools a forest trader needs? Tools a forest trader needs. Number one, you're going to need a laptop here. Yeah. A friend of mine was asking me, is laptop really necessary? Because he was really finding it difficult to get a laptop. I said, yes. For me, you know, we all learn with different, we have different level of learning, all right? All right? Like for me, even up until now, I've been, I've been training for like four years, all right? Up until now, I still do my analysis on laptop. If I, do my, if I try to do my analysis on phone, I get it wrong. I get it wrong. So there is a need for that bigger screen for you to see what's happening to your left hand side since we are technical traders. All right. And of course, we have three type, major types of traders on emphasis are laid on two. Number one type of trader is fundamental trader. Number two is technical trader. Number three is sentimental trader. Now, a fundamental trader is those guys that focus on economic news of a nation. They only trade news. They are waiting for, let's say, in time of election, if 
uh, if it favors one party, they are going to know that, okay, this pair is going to go weak or bearish. And popular news, we also all know is NFP, that's non-farm payroll. Whenever that news is released, if it favors USD, just know that any pair that's against USD would definitely go, you're going to, for example, you're going to be buying, if it favors GBP, if it favors USD, then you're going to be selling GBP USD. If you are selling GBP USD, that simply means you are shorting GBP and you are buying USD. All right. Another two you're also going to need is a phone. Of course, you definitely need a smartphone. And the third thing, you need a chatting platform. Like right now on my screen, you can see on the laptop screen on my on the Mac that I put here, you see this is a trading view chatting platform. This is how it's going to look like. All right. Which I'm going to be showing you in no time. While on my phone, you see this is MetaTrader 4. This is a, a platform that you are given by your broker. They give you login and server to login on this one, right? And another thing you're also going to need is you need a trading journal, all right? This is a trading journal to put down your trades, records, and all of those things. This thing really helps me, putting down your entry point, your exit, and most especially, the reason why you took that trade. What are the conferences you saw? What is your strategy? And what is your risk management, money management, all of those things? Now, I can see questions popping and coming in. Just kindly hold on. I'm going to be taking these questions after the end of this class. And the last thing you will need, you need a broker. So for those who do not have a broker yet, I've explained, I've just given a, a slight explanation of who brokers are. Brokers are just like your bank. Without broker or brokerage account, you are not allowed to trade the Forex market. All right, you need to get a broker. And I I, 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 applied, I alighted six tips in selecting a broker in one of my videos. So you can just go check it out. So if you are watching this on a later date, I'm going to link it on this video. And the link is going to pop up here. All right, so go check that out. And in doing all of that, we took all those six steps in selecting all of our four recommended brokers. So you can check the link of the description box to sign up with any broker that you want to. And I also put them based on countries that is favorable. Like if you're in the United States or in Canada, IC markets will definitely not work for you because you don't accept clients from the United States and Canada and so on and so forth. Everything is highlighted there in the description box. Now getting started. Now, how do you make money in Forex? Now, you can make money in Forex trading by understanding how all the concepts work, understanding price, understanding liquidity, understanding volume and all of that. But before we head straight to that, let's get to what is traded in the Forex market. To simply put, money is what is traded in the Forex market, nothing more. Currency, money is what is traded in the Forex market. You are trading either GBP against the USD, or you are trading the New Zealand dollar against the JPY, which is Japanese yen, or you are trading Canadian dollar against the US dollar, like that. That's what's trading in the Forex market. Now, the next one here is base and quotes currency. Base and quotes currencies are, they came about by ISO, International Standardization Organization, all right? International Standardization Organization codes. So this body of people came together to pull down these codes, like you see here, GBP, USD. So in this case, the first one to your left, use this GBP, that's your base currency, and USD is your quote currency. So these currencies are fixed by this body, ISO. All right, so you cannot change it. It's static this way. So what this simply means, if you are buying, if you are on buy on GBP USD, that simply means you are buying pounds. That means you are buying GBP and you're selling USD. Okay, buy can also be, be interchangeably be used as long or bull, all right? Why sell can also be used, it can also be said to be short or bear, or you can hear bearish, all right? So that's how it's what those are base and quotes currency. And now here's a quick tip about base and quotes currency. You would never find Euro as a quotes currency. It is always in base currency. Pound would have also been that example, but Euro GBP defiled that, all right? So if you ask me, why is it like that? I don't also know because ISO code just put it that way. So you can't change it, it's that static. So you cannot have USD GBP, USD GBP all right? It's always GBP USD, all right? So the next one is market participants. Who are those, who are, who are those that are participating in this first market? Number one, we have huge banks, which are the interbanks. That's where the major transaction take place. That's number one. Then number two, we have central banks. Yes, central banks of all the nations are participating in Forex. Now it is what you have noted that central banks are participating not for profit reasons. They are participating for sake of stabilization. Now, if the dollar is too high, it's a problem to America. 
So they have to pump, the Central Bank of America have to pump in some money to bring down the value of dollar. If it's too low, it's also a challenge. Now we have examples, scenarios of countries where we have their currencies extremely low and we have also countries uh, that have their uh, currencies extremely high. So they, that's where central bank come in, into play. And not just that, we have speculators, all right? We also have the individual, the retail traders, me and you, and so on and so forth. Those are market participants. So Forex is not illegal. If you think it's illegal, it's not illegal because even your central bank of your country, your government is participating in it, all right? Bulls and bear, that's our next one, bulls and bear. Just as I said earlier, bull simply means buy or long, and bear simply means shorts or sell. So the reason why they kind of use these two animals is because they are mode of attack. Whenever a bull wants to attack, it fights with the, it fights with the horn, and drag, uh, and drag its prey or the person who is fighting with to the upside while bear drags with its teeth, all right? Okay, and the next one is bid and ask price. Bid and ask price is simply the price that which you are quoted at whenever you are buying or the price you are quoted at whenever you are selling. The ask price is always at the top. So whenever you enter into a trade, whenever you want to buy, you are quoted at the top price. The one at, there are two lines. You are quoted at the lines that is at the top. Why the bridge price is bottom. So I'm going to be showing you that in a bit. All right. Then what is spread? Spread is a tiny amount of money that your broker charge you. Now it is a difference between your bid and your ask price. There's always a difference between those two lines. So those gap that is right there is what we call spread. Now peep and Piped. I skipped forest market hard. That's because I want to show you with this graph. Before I go to people and people, let me show you on this graph. Forest market hard. You would want to ask me when is the best time to trade forex. Here's a simple, straight answer to that. Then you will decide when I finish explaining this graph to you. Now we have GMT at the top, which is UK time, and we have EST at the top, which is New York time. And we have four major sessions. We have London session, New York session. Sydney session and Tokyo session. The biggest of it all, which has over 30% volume is London, all right? Because that is the capital business of the world and followed by New York and we have the others. So the first to start this session is always Sydney because 24, which is 12 a.m. GMT, Sydney is already awake. Their bank is already running at their end. It's already 8 a.m. Sydney. Now note, Forex market work by bank. So once, once any bank in any of these country is open, is running, it's in their business hour, Forex will always, the transaction will keep running. So that's why Forex is a 24-5 industry. So Sydney opens at 24, okay? Then Tokyo joins at, sorry, it's tw at 22, at 22 right here. Sydney opens at 22, which is at 10 p.m. GMT and Tokyo joins at 12 a.m., okay? That's GMT. And you can also, for those who are in Eastern in New York, you can check with Eastern time. And it's, Sydney closes six in the morning, 6 a.m. GMT in the morning, and Tokyo still keep running. From here, London joins. And you can see by 1 p.m., New York joins. Now here's what is very, very, very important. What is the best time to trade? The best time to trade is definitely from the busier session to this one, the two giants. Now, what happens when the two giants meet? This is what we call overlap session, where they overlap. Now, trades move very, very fast, at, move at a very, very fast pace at this high. Now, you can check your time. We are currently at in, on the overlap session because it's currently 120. So just watch how the market is gonna be moving, okay, or we are approaching because my time is GMT plus one and I'm currently at 120, Why uh, London is one hour, one hour be behind. So in one hour time, you see how market is gonna be moving, the volume will increase, all right? So that's that on Forex market hour. Then peep and peep it. Just as human being movement is counted in steps, Forex market movement is counted in peeps and peep it. Peep and peep it can be likened into a work clock Pipet is the seconds, the seconds that count on a work clock, and the peep is the minutes, all right? So peep is the fourth decimal number. 
after is the is the fourth number after the decimal is the fourth number after the decimal this is theoretical one i'm going to be taking you to the practical one in no time okay then lot size lot size has to do deal with the volume now i can buy the same pair let's say mr a and mr b can buy gbp usd the same time the same pair the same market condition but using different lot sizes lot sizes determine what they are going to get at the end of the day either the number of amount that are going to lose or to gain. For example, if you are using one standard loss size, which is one point, which is denoted by 1.0, for each peep movement on most forest pairs, you are going to be making $10 for each peep movement. Now, for example, it moved $100 in your favor, that's going to be $1,000 in your favor. Let's say Mr. B also entered the same market condition, at the same time, every condition, the same thing with Mr. Mr. A. And it goes in with 0 0.1, which is one mini. It's going to be making one dollar for each peep movement. For so for 100 peep movement times one dollar, that's going to be hundred dollars. So you just understand how it works. So we have standard lot size, we have mini lot size, and micro. For micro movement, for each peep movement on micro, the person stands to make just ten cents. So that is why the money that you come into the forex market it also really matter because the more money you put in, the more you start to make in turn, or the more loss size you get to you, the, the higher the loss size you get to use. Now, the next one is leverage. What is leverage? Leverage is what is offered by your broker. Now, whenever you place a trade or you come in with, 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 into Forex trading with $1,000 and you want to buy a particular, now all of these things that I'm explaining, I'm just giving a summary. The full detailed video is already in my beginner's guide here in my beginner guide on YouTube. So you can go check that out at your leisure. That's if you are starting out for us, okay? In order not to just make it boring for those who are already experienced, the advanced guy who have passed this level. So that's why I'm speeding things up. So leverage is an amount of money that your broker borrows you to do business as at the time being. So for every transaction you put in, you are required to bring in one percentage of any transaction. Let's say for example, you want to buy one standard of GBP USD and GBP USD as of, the, as of that time to make things very easy is 1.1, 0, 0, 1.100000. All right. So that simply means you need, you require 110,000 to buy the base of, of, of the currency. All right. It will make sense very soon. You, you only need to bring, depending depend on the loss that you're going to be using, you only need to bring 1% while your broker bring the 99%. That 99% that a broker brings to the table is what we call leverage. So it is because of leverage, leverage, that's why individuals like me and you are now able to participate in the forest market. We no longer need to get about 40 to $60 million before we're allowed to play in the forest market. Now we have leverage ranging from one to one, one to five, one to 30, one to 20, one to 50, one to 100, one to 200, one to 500. Now you would want, now based on the explanation I just gave, you'll be able to best determine Whenever your broker is asking you what leverage you want, you'll be able to determine the leverage select, depending on the account, what you want to achieve with the account. So you select based on that. Equity and margin. Margin, as I explained earlier, is the amount of this 1% that you, you put down for purchasing anything that you want to purchase. Why leverage is 99%, which your broker brings in. Why equity? Equity is your floating current balance plus your floating uh, amount, whether you are losing or making, you are, whenever your trades are floating in profit, it will, is the summation of that plus your current account balance. That's equity. So equity from tweet. So whenever you close all trades, the amount that is current, the amount that is on equity eventually becomes the amount that will be reflect on your account balance. Take profit. Take profit is an order that you set at a strategic point instructing your broker that whenever price gets to that range, that threshold, it should cut your trade out in profit and keep it for you, regardless whether your phone, your, whether you are with your phone, whether it's off or not, it's an automatic uh, order that you give to your broker. Stop loss is the exact opposite. Stop loss is an order that you set, instructing your broker that whenever price gets to this level, it should cut you out in loss. That is what you can afford to take. Now, what are other types? Just as what you can see on my screen right here, we have GBP USD. We have market execution on GBP USD or any pair. We have market execution. We have buy limit. We have sell limit. We have buy stop and we have sell stop. Other types are now most 
most times we all use market execution because market execution allow you to join the market based on the current price. Now you may decide not to join in the current price or you want to wait for some certain condition for some, some certain price to reach before you hop on. So that's when you explore the other option like buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop. More explanation on that on my other video that beginners guide, you can also refer to that. Now what MT4 user experience or user interface. On MT4, this is how the user interface is going to be like. Now you can see all the pairs I just explained. These are the base and quote currencies. You can see GBP USD, BTC USD. This is this is Bitcoin dollar is what the price of Bitcoin. So at the time I took this screenshot, Bitcoin was 53,844. So this is where you have the bid and ask price. All right, this is these are the bids and ask price. So the fourth we define we define PIP as the fourth number after the decimal point. So on GBP USD. One, two, three. So seven is the peep in this case. Why the pipette is the one that is raised above it, which is four. That's pipette. Four is the pipette right there. So I believe everything is becoming to make sense now to the new guys in the house. So the only exception to this peep count being, being uh, for peep being the fourth number after the decimal point is JPY pairs. Now, in any place you see JPY, like GPP, JPY, you can see the peep here is zero. Why the pipette is three? Because in JPY pairs, the pips are always the second number after the decimal. And you will also notice the whole number, the whole number is three, there are three whole numbers before we even find the dot. Same thing on USD JPY2. We have one, two, three before the dot. So one is the pip here, and seven is the pipette. So I believe that is clear. And on, on this note, let's move to the next one. Then the next thing is we have candlesticks. I will, I'm going to be explaining how the, the user interface work, how you can place your first trade if you are starting out today, how you can place your first trade, all the things that you need to know in placing your first trade and profiting of the forest market. Now, I'm not trying to encourage you all to tell you that forex is very easy or you're gonna start making up money the first time you start trading. No, it's not, it's all about process, but it's worthwhile as you are taking the first leap, trust me, things will only get better. Yes, your account will be blown, you're gonna lose money, you're gonna have sleepless night and all of that okay but trust me it's worth taking the leap for all right so now we have headed we are heading straight to the candlesticks now the candlesticks these are the major things in the forex market once you come to technical analysis all right now i mentioned earlier that there are three types of analysis which is fundamental technical and sentimental the ones we focus on which we have most on youtube and on everywhere are technical traders because I am also a technical trader. Technical traders are just as I explained, are those guys that looked at what has happened in the past. They believe whatever has happened, what price has done back in time would repeat itself. Whenever they see a pattern that looks like, let's say for example, it looks like this, we have an up move and it comes to this extent, and then we have a bend. They believe if this thing happens again, if all of these ones. If this structure repeats itself again, maybe somewhere around here. Let's do that again. Maybe somewhere around here. Then we should have this upward move again. That's what technical traders believe in. All right. So now in using technical traders, we have to really understand how candlesticks works and the information that they are telling you. The first one is a bullish candle. Why the second one is a bearish candle. Now, in knowing these candles, it's not based on the colors because these days all charting platform, most especially trading view and meta trader for will allow you to tweak these candles to whatsoever color you want. If you're a lady, you want to like play around with pink and purple, all of those nice stuff. Or if you're a guy, you want to do black or white. So you can change the color to whatsoever thing. So how do you know a bullish candle? And how do you know a bearish candle? To know a bullish candle is the open starts from the low and it closes at the top. That's how you know, basically know a bullish candle. Now, this point you ever got to, the lowest point is called the low. This is the opening price and it moves up. It moves even, even past this close. It moves up to this extent. This is the highest point. So when it goes to this point, forces like the bearish forces push you straight to the downside and the time was complete. Now we have 15, we have a various time frame. We have one minute, we have M5, M5 that's five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, four hours. So if this candle was a one hour candle, that simply means it took one hour to fully open, come to the downside and move up and close. So once the time it's time, it closes at this point. The same explanation also happened for the bearish. 
So, so to know a bearish candle, the opening price starts from up and it closes down, just like from up is diminishing. So that's a bearish candle. I can't wait to take it straight to the C step, the PC. Now, technical analysis. Um, the technical analysis is using trading view, understanding support and resistance. Now things are really starting to get really advanced. Now let's get to let's get to it. Let's get to it. So this is the video I was I'm recommending that you guys should watch if you are a beginner. In this video, I explain everything. I put this thing together in a playlist. So after watching this beginner's guide to forex trading. I made this video 2020. After watching this video, you can revert to the next one. I, I arranged I arrange them based on how you would better understand it on YouTube. All right. So here. Here is our whenever you open your trading view. Now to chat, to have a chatting platform, just go to tradingview.com. All right. Do that trading view. I'm going to link it in the description box too. For those who are watching on later day, go to tradingview.com to have your chatting platform. You could use this and you could also decide to do it on your MetaTrader 4. And the example of MetaTrader 4 is this one. This is the MetaTrader 4 that we have here. All right, this is my MetaTrader 4. This is a clean chart, same thing. So, but let's go ahead with TradingView for now. Here, if the things that, let me introduce you to the user interface and how all of these things work just briefly. So these are your drawing tool. If you want to apply anything on your screen, on your screen, you want to do any analysis. These are your drawing tool. This this panel to your left, and these are your candlesticks. So you can see how price is been moving down, up, down, up, down, up. So using this tool, you can do analysis on it. So this first tool that we have here is called Crosshair on MetaTrader 4, but here it's called it's simply called Cross. So this helps you to understand where the price is and the date where this candle form and all of the closing and opening price. And we have OHLC, OHLC. And you will notice any candle I hover this crosshair, this crosshair up on, you're gonna see the info, the data at the top right there. So right here, it will tell me the open, to tell me the open, tell me the high, tell me the low, tell me the close, which is what we explained earlier on the candlestick, Japanese candlesticks, all right? Then the next one is, this is your drawing tool, where you can take your trend line, info line, all of these lines, you can use them. So we are gonna be using these tools a lot, this horizontal line and this trend line. In fact, all these ones that I have are staring. This one, favorite, 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 we're gonna be using them a lot. So this one is your pitchfork. We have a lot of them. If you're using Fibonacci retracement, you also wanna be playing around right here too. So this is for the drawing, if you want to draw your screen and so on and so forth. So you can just go ahead and play around to measure peep, to count peep, which we explained earlier. We are gonna take this ruler to measure from here, just calculate and drag. So to tell you the number of people from, let's say for example, from if we run long right now, want to go run by, from this point I placed this ruler to up this high, that would be 39, 40 people or 39 people. So this this one at the top is where the peep the peep is. That's 40. Let me specify here. This is the peep. This is the peep. So 40.4. That's the peep. All right. So, and this one counts the number of bars that it will take, number of candles that it will take before it gets there. All right. So that's that on trading view. So I believe I'm getting everything. I'm answering your questions that you probably may have in here. And you may probably come with so nothing more. So now let's talk about analysis. Now, how do you profit from the forex market? Now, this is the main deal. This is the major deal. How do you profit from the forex market? How do you know that this guy is about to go to buy or is about to short? Is about to go bullish or is about to go bearish? That's where the major work is. And just know, forex trading is divided into three quadrants. That's why I tell students it's divided into three quadrants. Let's say we have this chunk of pie, correct? And we have this median right here. So this part is 10%, correct? Then this is 30% and this is 60%. Now, I want you guys to guess this 10% is what? Is what? What do you guys think is the 10%? Let me see what you guys think. Let me see what you guys think is the 10%. No, in the Forex market, we have three quadrants. 
Okay, no idea. So let me explain it real quick. The 10% in Forex market is just strategy, your trading system. And funny enough, this is what most people pay attention to more. They want to know the strategy. They believe there's a holy grail or they believe there's something that Jeffrey Benson isn't telling them that is really making me money. That's not the main thing. It's just 10%. What 30% is the risk management, money management, and trade management. So let's just call it manage, managerial course, which is money management, trade management, and risk management, all right? So it's just 30%. This is 30%. And the major chunk of the whole thing is psychology. So this has to deal with how your emotions, how you stay disciplined, um, if you have losing trade, how you deal with that and all of that. So this is forex trading for you. So all of what I want to explain, I want to start with explaining the 10%, which is the strategy. I'll start with explaining the 10%, which is the strategy. This has to do with your understanding of candles moving up and down, all of those things. It's just 10%. Then when I'm done with that, I'm going to move to the money management, risk management, and trade management. Then after that, I'll just touch a little bit on psychology. All right? Thank you, Timothy. He got it right. All right, so now let's go. On my strategy, it's pretty straightforward. There are some things that I need to look at before I determine, okay, this pair is about to go bullish or to go bearish. By now, you understand what I mean by bullish and bearish because that's what I said before starting out. These are the first things I mentioned before we started out, correct? Bullish simply means going up or buy or very simply means coming down or sell or short. Now, the first thing I do is I put in support and resistance. Now, support and resistance are levels or they are zones where whenever price gets to those levels, there's always a reaction, either to go by, either to go up or to come down. In drawing support and resistance, there are various ways. Everyone have their diverse ways of plotting support and resistance. But the way that I use, I dropped a video just yesterday the way that I use is using psychological levels. Let me just recap on that psychological levels. Let's head straight to that real quick. Psychological levels are random numbers, which the banks, uh, banks, hedges, speculators, they pay attention to them because it work based on human proposition. It's just a way we think. When we go to, a, let's say, like a, 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 any place where price is negotiable and we are given a price, we want to negotiate to so a random number. So that's why it works. It's just normal human psychology. So I just dropped this horizontal line. I'm going to double click on this black part, double click, then to bring up these settings. So I'm going to just snap it to a random number. So to know the random numbers, I have to look at the current price. The current price is 1.38747 as at the time of making this video. So the nearest whole number is going to be 1.39000. Yeah. So once we are just going, to, we're just going to click that and it snaps right there. So I just go ahead and add three to the upside and three to the downside. And I'm going to explain how these levels they react. So in adding psychological levels, we just keep on adding 50, 50 pips. So the nearest next psychological level is going to be 1.39500. That's the psychological level. Next, next one, I said I'm going to add three to the upside and add three to the downside. So one more to the upside. Now you can add as many as you want. As, as So far it's relevant to the current chart, it's fine. But I don't just want to make the chart messy because we have a lot of people looking at this chart. If I'm the one, I don't mind putting it all around, but we have a lot of people who can interact with charts separately. Some like their chart super, super clean. So that's why we're just going to be adding the little. Okay, so it's fine, it's fine this way. Now you would notice when price got to this region, if it's at the top, it's called resistance. If it's below, it's called support, all right? So you notice when price snapped to this region, what happened, it got rejected to the downside. It came back to retest this point, got rejected, retested, and it dropped to this region. This is region of support. Let me label all that. If it's found at the bottom, it's found at the bottom, it's called support. Then if it's found at the, at the top, it's called resistance. All right, so you just want to screen grab that and we move on. So now how do you trade with this? You would always, any business, in any business you are doing at all, all investors want to always buy, they want to buy low 
and sell high. You want to buy low, you want to buy at this point, for example, and sell high. The same thing happens here. So at this point on the support right here, you want to buy here and you sell off at this point. You want to buy here again and you sell off at this point. Now, it is not all support that you buy, you buy and it's, it's not all resistance that you buy. The ability for you to understand where to buy, the, on, on which support you need to buy and on which resistance you need to sell, that is what makes you a very good technical analyst. In determining that, first, you have to take a very good look to your left-hand side. Taking a look to the left-hand side and see how price has reacted at that region where price currently is testing. Now, let's go and, and check it out. When price got to 1.4000, what has happened in the past? Right here, we have a report, a price touch here, and immediately we have a very snap. We have a snap to the, we have a snap back. Yeah, it's held at this point. So you just want to note this. Yeah, so this simply means this level is so strong, it's good. So when price got here at this point, what happened? It snapped back. Okay, that's good. That's good record so far. And when price got to this point, what happened? We had a snap back to go to this point, snap back, go to this point, snap back to here and here, and so on and so forth. I keep snapping back. So what what information does this tell you? So whenever price come back later here at one point four zero zero later in future, then there's definitely going to be an action. It's either it touches and drops, or it breaks through, or it breaks towards this point, or it comes here, it breaks retest and bang, all right? As in the case that happened right here. It's happened right here. We have break and retest and we have bounce off, like the one that happened right here. So you saw how it came, it broke past 1.4, right? Came to test this point and retested 1.4000, then what happened, bang. So we could have something like that later in the future. So that's our support and resistance. That's how it works, that's just a basic. So I make a lot of videos on this support and resistance. So you need, want to just calm down, go watch those videos at your leisure time and jot, take some notes and experiment with what I'm saying. This doesn't just work with GBPUSD. It works on any currency pair. It works on Euro USD, it works on gold. If you want to be trading index, US 30, NASDAQ, German 30, uh, XMP 500, any one of them at all, they all work. So upon doing that, you want to also apply some trend line, which is what I use. I prefer to use trend line than using any other indicators because trend line tell a lot of stories. Now, what is trend line? Trend line is a normal, is a traditional tool that we have on all charting platform on trading on MetaTrader 4. It's this is it right here. On MetaTrader 4, we have it here. This is a trend line. Yeah. This is the tool right here on MetaTrader 4. While on trading view, here is the tool right here. You click on this small arrow here and you select trend line. So you want like Come on here, come on here, just tap once and drag it across. This is a trend line right here, this plane. So with the help of the trend, how does the trend line work and how do you plot the correct trend lines? There are two rule of thumb. Number one rule in plotting the trend line is noting at least two peaks or trough. At least, come on, at least two peaks. Or troughs, and the you know, second rule is make it, make sure, make sure it's relevant to the current chart. Now I'll explain this real quick. So you just want to screenshot that because I'm playing off very soon. So now, on, on plotting the trend line, after taking this two, you know we have a high here. This is a peak. Here is a peak. Here is a peak. And here is a peak. Let's zoom some time in for the benefit of those who are using viewing from their phone from office or from whatever we have a peak right here we have a peak so at least two so even if we have one here and one here we draw a trend line across it is valid based off the definition we just gave and you just want to extend it across so that later in the future whenever price return to this point you can just go short if it's could it that be a bounce there are two types of trend lines we have trend line bounce and trend line break. We have two types of trend line. Two types of trend line. We have trend line bounce. Let me just put bounce. 
or trend line break. Okay, now let me explain the bounce. In a bounce, here's an example of a bounce. Let's say, for example, you, you have identified the trend line. This is the first one, this is the second peak, and you just draw it across down right there. So whenever price ever come back to touch this trend line, okay, just know that price, this trend line act as a dynamic resistance or support. So price touches this trend line, chances are high that it's gonna bounce to the downside. All right, so this is what we call trend line bounce, touching this trend line and having this snapback effect, coming to touch this trend line and bang to the downside. That's what we call trend line bounce. This point is the point of bounce. Another example, when, trend, when it came back to touch this trend line, what happened? Bang, right there, price moved to the downside, at least 50 pips, all right? So that's how trend line bounce work. Now the next one is trend line break. In most cases, we have two types of trend line break. We have break and retest, and we have immediate break. Example of break and retest. Let's just go back. Let me go back and show you more example. Now, here's a an example of trend line. Here's a trend line too. We have a trend line here. So let me shrink in and let's see if it's fitting our definition. Now remember about making it relevant to your chart. I'm gonna explain that real in a bit. I'm gonna explain that. So we have first touch here, we have second, we have third, we have fourth, we have fifth right here. So here's an example of, here's an example of bounce. When price got to this point, what happened? It bounced, got to this point, it bounced, got to this point, it bounced. But here's an example of a break. So whenever it breaks out this trend, line, whenever it breaks this trend line, just know that we are ready for an up move. Remember I said there are two types of break. This is what we call immediate break. It breaks and never comes back to retest at all. It's break and it does not do any retest, okay? Let me show you an example of break and retest. Here's a very, a very good example of break and retest right here. Let's say we have something like this. So you see, we have bounce, 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 bounce. Bounce here, uh, bounce right here. So this is a breakout, came back to retest this trend line before bang. So that's an example of break and retest. So in most cases, the one that is, the commonest one is this one, break and retest. Uh, it's only in some cases that you find immediate break, but break and retest is very common chart. So you can do backtesting of all of these things that I'm saying. So that's how I use my trend line. Now, from this current chart, you will find out that we are currently on a situation of a breakout from what I've just explained. So we have a bounce, we have a bounce right here, bounce, bounce, and we also had a bounce right here. So now here's the trend line that is breaking out. Now, who can tell me what type of trend line breakout we are having here? Remember, I said we have two types of breakout. It's either a bounce. Sorry, it's either break and retest or immediate. Which one are we having right here? If you answered break and retest, you are correct because we have a break first. We had a break right here, came back to retest, break here, retesting again. Then we may have something like this very soon. All right. Okay, so let's keep watching. I don't just determine my entry just like that. I, there are some confluences that I look out before taking any position. Now let's head straight to the confluences that I look at, things I look out for. Now, so far so good, I've been able to explain psychological level, which act as support and resistance, and I also explain trend lines. Now, in using these two, these two tools, you can be profitable, correct? You can be profitable. And the reason why I say that is matching those two tools together and adding your understanding of price action will set you on your path of success. What I mean by price action is understanding how candles work. Let me explain this one real quick before I talk about the confluence. Understand, understanding how candles really work. Now, you really want to pay attention to candles whenever they are this support or resistance. Watch the candles patterns that they give. Now, there's an app that I want to recommend to you guys. Go download this app on Play Store or Apple Store, JCP, Japanese Candles Pattern, JCP. It's really, really helpful. While I was starting out, that app really helped me understand how Japanese candlesticks are formed and most importantly, the psychology behind them. That's what you need to understand. You may not necessarily memorize their names because all of these candles, they, their patterns, they have names, a lot of them. You may not necessarily memorize their name because it's not really, really important. If you don't want to teach, just understand the psychology behind each of them. Like for example, now we saw when price got to this one I, we, we, I did here. You saw when price, I gave this example. So let me just continue with this. When price got here, what happened? We saw this weak rejection right here. So this is telling us a lot of information. Remember what I told you about candlesticks, about candlestick bullish and bearish candlesticks now. This first bullish one, this is, a, this is a bullish candle. This week that it gave here simply means that this candle was once as bullish as this extent. Now, just these candles are just like normal candles that we have. Let's say you take a candle and a knife. 
and you are chopping it off. You're chopping it off. And when you're chopping it off, you are leaving the thread in between. So when you drop that candle and maybe someone else who wasn't there before come pick up that candle, what information do you think that person is going to get? Here's what probably will be going through the person's mind. Oh, this candle was once as long as this, but the person who held this candle before chopped this candle off to this extent. So that is the same information we are having here. So what is simply make us understand this, if you, if you would notice, let me zoom in one more time for the benefit of those who are using phone one more time. You can see this candle also had a low at this point. You see a low right here. Here's a small tiny low, though it's, on, it's hardly noticeable. There's a low there. That simply means this candle was once a bearish candle. But bullish forces pushed it up, up to this extent. Then the bearish, when I mean bearish, the sellers, they came in to push this price to this point. And since we are in 15 minutes time frame, the candle closed at 15 minutes right here. And another one pops up. So when this one popped up, this red one popped up, first, it's I don't know which one it did first. It could probably go up. So this candle was once a bullish candle. It went up, and then very forces bring it down again. And it's closed at this point. Once it's, once it's 15 minutes, this candle closes, another one forms. So you can see all of this time frame. We have a one H, which, which simply means one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, and monthly. Each of these candles took one hour to form. If you go on the daily, each of the if you, each of the candle on daily take one day to open and to close. So that's a lot of time. So depends on the type of trader that you are. That will determine the time of the time frame you are going to be operating from. Now we have basically three major types of traders. We have scalpers. Scalpers are the ones that they are very fast traders. They go on one minute chart to pick their entries. Yeah, they are very, very patient and they don't have day job. They have to have, that's, if you don't have day job or you have full time, a lot of time with you that you want to focus, dedicate to trading, then you can decide to be a scalper. They only target, let's say like 10, 20 pips maximum. Whereas day trader is the second one. Day traders, which is who I am, Day traders are the guys that they focus on opening their trade each day and closing it that same day. They don't keep trades overnight. While swing traders, which is the third category, are those guys who have day job. Maybe they don't have a lot of time. They play straight from the four hour, one hour, and they leave it, they let it run throughout the week, maybe three days, two days, and so on and so forth. Yeah, the last one, which is the fourth one, which is not really common with retail traders, but let me just chip it in, is position traders. These are traders that they play straight and they check monthly, like monthly, biannually, quarterly, yearly, and all of that. So that's really great. So the one I am is I'm a day trader because this is what I do full time. So you already understand day trading uh, type of type of trader, and you also understand how these kind of sticks work. So in understanding how this candlestick kind of work, that JCP, the application I recommend for, to you will really help. Now we have bullish engulfing candles. We have bearish engulfing. We have Heramai. We have Doji. Example of Doji's other indecision candles. Let me look for one if we would see anyone, any candle that closes like here, here, here. Oh, it's not a Doji. It's not fully a Doji. The one that has no real body at all. It's just weak. That's what we mean by Doji. I'm trying to look for one. Oh, here's a dodgy. Yeah, here's, an, here's a very good example of a dodgy right here. So in downloading that app, it will explain a lot more to you guys on how candlesticks work. So in with the understanding of, now talking about confluence, back to confluence. In trading, you have to have at least three confluence. This is what I recommend. Today, we are going to be using three confluences. Number one, we are going to be using trend line to determine our entry point. When I mean confluence, to determine our entry point, trend line. Number two, we're gonna be using psychological level, which you can also say it's support and resistance levels. Just as we said earlier. And we're also gonna be using third one, price action. You can say uh, candlesticks pattern. Could it be chart pattern or candlestick pattern? There's a link that I'm going to drop in the description box. Use that link to download charts, uh, these chart patterns. We have a lot of charts pattern. We have a lot of chart pattern. We have continuation chart pattern. We have reversal chart pattern. I'm going to drop the link. That will teach you more on chart pattern. So there are a whole lot that I'm trying to teach you majority of four years in just a few minutes. Okay. So there are a whole lot of them. So if you're not getting this, make sure you subscribe to this 
if you are getting it or if you're not getting it, just subscribe to this channel so each time i keep dropping video in bits by bits you have to get those notifications first on your phone and you can keep following up from there now back to our conferences now let's start taking action first we have this trend line right here okay everyone will agree with me that on 15 minutes what trend are we in are we on a sell trend or buy trend in other case are we on bullish trend or bearish trend or in another way are we in short trend or short trend or long trend so all these words are used interchangeably so i'm trying to like change this word so we can get familiarized with all of these things all right so we, on 15 minutes you determine that with your eyes you know that we're in a downtrend it's coming down the charts it's coming down okay so this simply means we're in a bearish trend on 15 minutes but however 15 minutes is a small time frame for you to determine trend it's not just enough so you have to go to a higher time frame now if you want to be a day trader just as i am i'm a day trader if you want to be a day trader you have to determine your main trend write this down it's very very important you have to determine your main trend on h4 current trend on h1 and your entry time frame entry you entry time frame that's where you stay and watch for entry candles out i mean by entry do your it should be 15 minutes so that's why you see most times whenever i'm posting chart i post more of 15 minutes so if you want to be a scalper for scalper let me raise all of the songs no, i'm sorry for scalpers you have to your main trend is h1 main trend h1 current trend m15 or m30 or you can use m30 that's 30 minutes and uh, your entry is one minute that's really a lot of noise on one minute right but that it is what it is <laughs> if you want to be a swing trader swing traders your main trend should be on weekly yeah you have to be looking at weekly your current trend would be on daily and your entry time frame would be on h1 some find more comfortable on h4 but you can do h1 it's very very fine all right so these are the breakdown for all types of traders now as a day trader remember i said i'm a day trader so let's go through that route first i have to look at my main trend on four half time frame what is my trend now looking at this mainly looking at this from even as an amateur you would know that this or as a novice you know that this thing is going up right it's moving up with just your naked eyes yeah it's moving up right so hence we are in a bullish trend you know our main trend is bullish so whenever we're in a bullish trend anything that comes to the downside it's viewed as retracement we view them as retracement so this is just nothing but a retracement retracements are just like pullback now yes let me just touch a little bit on market structure in forex trading we have impulsive move correction impulse correction impulse correction that's how the market move there are tiny tiny ones in between them there are tiny ones in between. that's how the market move so if it's also coming down we have impulse correction smaller input this is a correction still a bigger correction we have impulse this is a corrective move then this is an impulse then trend is changing here again this is where you call reversal this is where a reversal point this is a reversal point or you can call it maybe a slight retracement point all right so from here we, we are likely to have something like that okay so i'm not just basing off this thing on just one thing on just one idea so i have to look at a lot of things like looking at the trend line and also looking at um my levels which is psychological level support and resistance and also looking at how price has been behaving in that region that i'm, I'm likely to go long or short all right so you already understand so this is a retracement so what we are expecting to do right here now is we want price to give us sign for us to go long that's what we are looking at to do so we don't just do that on the four half time frame so we still have to look at the current time frame which is one half time frame so what's one and a half saying because there are times that four hours could be bullish on one half time frame it's going to be bearish like example that we have right now four hours saying it's bullish for her it's bullish obviously but on one half time frame looking at it because it's just, you can to some extent it's bearish okay it's bearish so what do you do in this extent just know that in no time one half would definitely play dance to the tune of four half time frame yeah but in times of reversal reversal happen first on a smaller time frame which is 15 minutes or one half before it gets to the bigger time frame so that would just be a new topic some other time okay but i just understand that the smaller time frame will respect the bigger time frame okay 
So now one hour, what's it doing? So on one hour time frame, we are currently seeing some candles. Reject. Now we are paying more attention to the price action. We're no longer looking at the whole structure and all of these things. We're paying out more attention to the price action, how prices have been reacting at those our levels and all of that. Okay, so price touch here, it dropped, touch here, dropped. And you saw how price just thought immediately touch our 1.38500 and we have a push to the upside, touching 1.39000 and it's dropped to the downside. Okay. Um, yeah, what do we do? We just go to 15 minutes for entry. Now we know we are looking for long entries. Now this would have been the best place to go long. Why am I going long? Why am I saying long, not short? Reason why I'm going long is because number one, we have a breakout. Remember, at least we should have at least three bounces most times. One, two, three and four right here, touching here, broke out, coming to retest. So we are long, what I mean by long, buy, for those who don't really understand, we are buying this pair, buying this pair, and the stop point, the stop point, which is stop loss, we are gonna put stop loss somewhere around here in order for us to be safe. So in doing this, I'm just gonna bring out a short or long button. Now everybody's, some people's opinion may just be different. Some people may think, oh, it's going short, they're not gonna be long. Well, that's the thing. So this is our entry. This is our entry. This red part signifies sell. Why this blue, green part signifies our take profit. So one very sweet thing and interesting thing about breakouts is whenever a price breaks out, there's always an, a very aggressive move. The move are always very huge, all right? So this one, we are risking 0.25% percentage all right, this will not take me to risk management, money management. I've been explaining the, now I've been explaining the strategy all along. This will not take me to risk management, money management, just in case we are wrong, because it is fine to be wrong. It's sometimes fine to be wrong. It's not bad, all right? So what I'm just gonna do now is, I'm gonna place a buy. If you are with your phone right there or on your Meta Trader 4 on your laptop, place a buy on your screen, sorry, on your phone, and just do these settings. We want our TP to be at 1.395, this region right here, 1.395. And I want, our stop loss is gonna be this point. Now, why am I setting my stop loss here? Because uh, most times, whenever price leave this region, this point, 1.38500, this region of support, it's, it's unlikely to get back here, all right? So we can also talk about that maybe on a later date, when we are talking about stop hunts and all of that, okay? So, but this is gonna be how, how we are going to go on this one. Just hold on, I want to share my screen and show you how I'm gonna place the trade. So it's, a, it's almost a complete beginner's guide. So while I'm trying to project my phone to the laptop screen so you all can see, okay, I believe it's ready, ready, ready. Yeah, I believe everyone can see. So this is an account that I have, which is 527, just $527 is on this account. So for the purpose of this class, let me just break it down one, one more time. So these are the current pairs that I have on my laptop. I believe everyone can see this. I believe everyone can see. It. If you can see this, let me know in the chat box. Stop us here because, well, okay. Everyone can see, I guess. Yeah. So the first pair you're going to see there is GBP USD. And you can see the spread there. You know, we explain spread. The spread there is zero as of the time right now. Depends on volume and it's long to it. All right. You can see the low of the pair and you can see the high. You can see all of those things that we have explained. Now, so this is the quote session, quotes where you have a lot of pairs and you cannot press this plus sign at the top right there to add more other pairs. So you can expand this forest majors and click adding and just come here. So you can see we have more pairs right here on the quotes. So you can keep on adding. You can even go ahead and add Bitcoin cryptos. So you can trade cryptos right here on MT4. So this is XRP, this is name coin, this is EOS, any coin that you want. So let's, you can open anything. You can also go to the first crypto, Litecoin, Ethereum, Dashcoin, add a lot of things that you know you want to trade. We have indices, US 200, I mean, sorry, Australian 200, a lot of them, German 30, and so on and so forth. We have uh, metal, which include gold. This is gold, XAUSD is gold. Gold, 
and all of that. So I believe you already understand how to, what I just mean. So you know that if you want to delete these things, if they are too much, just press this pen tool at the top, right? Press this bin and just select the ones you don't want to be among. You don't want to this one, I don't want this one, I don't want this one. And click this bin. It will leave that part. So I'm sure you get what I mean. So that's the first section. This one section, this next section is your charting platform where you do your normal analysis, just as we have on our laptop, we're doing on trading view. So you can just play around, change your color settings. You don't have to change your color settings. You have to go to settings, settings, and click settings, press, press color, change it to blue, and ready. Do any color that you want, that you want to. Now, that was the best time for us to get in. Now, remember, I said we are to go long on this pair. What do I do? What do I do? I'm just going to press this plus sign at this top. You can see this new order at the top, this one right here. I'll click on that. This is where I set my stop loss. First, this one you see right here is where we, where we specify whether it's market execution, buy limit, sell limit, or any other type that you want. But we are going to be using market execution. What market execution or instant execution means is it could either be instant or market execution. If you're using iPhone, it should be instant. Okay. It means the same thing. What it simply means is you are going to be quoted at the current market price. At the current market price. So the next line is for lot size. So if I'm pressing this plus one, it's going to keep increasing. So if it's 0 0.01, that is micro lot size. If it's 0 0.10, that's mini lot size. If it's 1.0, that's one standard lot size. Okay, if it's 10.0, that's 10 standard. For 10 standard, for each peak movement, if I click 10 standard, if I click buy right now, again to market with 10 standard, for each peak movement, I'm going to be making or losing $100. So if it goes on my favor, I'm going to be making $100 on each peak movement. But if it goes against, if it goes, uh, goes against me, I'm going to be losing too. If it comes in my favor, I'm going to be making. You understand? So just cost loss ratio. Since I have just a $500 account, I'm going to be going in with 0.02 to be safe for the first entry. All right. So, okay, you already understand. This is the bid price. Uh, this one floating right here is the bid. And this is the ask price, just as we already know. And this point that is underlined with red, that is your stop loss point. One underlined with green, that is our take profit point. So let's go back and check. Let's go check. Oh, no. No, it's flipping my phone. So I, I have to stop sharing this and go check the stop loss point. So whenever we check the stop loss point, make sure you put your stop loss the number that I'm going to call out as our stop loss to put it at this level. And if I call the TP, put it at this level. And once you are done, you click on buy. Or you can, in fact, just buy right now. So order is open. You can see how it's start from 20. So it's already for 20. We already have our orders open. And you can see it's on the line right here. You can see the order. But we don't have stop loss, not take profit yet. So in order for us to modify that, I'm just going to slide to the left-hand side. Click on this pen to right here. And I'm going to modify my stop loss and my take profit. So I'm going to do that soon. The reason I'm not, I've not done that before, it's very, very advisable that you put your stop loss before even placing the trade. Because I want to stop sharing my screen. I want to stop sharing my screen. And it may it be a little bit difficult for me to bring it back. So that's why I just want to explain everything. Now, you understand the parameters. I click on it to expand. You can see SL. This, is, this will reflect my stop loss value. CP will respect, re reflect my take profit value. And you can see the commission I'm being charged on this trade, zero minus 0 0.14. That's for the brokers, right? Now, remember the equity that I explained. Equity is currently 527.69. That is, it's minusing my current trade, which is at the top, which is uh, 20, 16 cents, which is from 20, 28, between, between 28 and 15 cents, minus from my current balance. That's to give me my equity, all right? Why the margin? That's 5.55 cents. That's the 1% that I'm using in purchasing this particular currency pay as of now. Why broker bringing 99%? Leverage is not reflected, it's at the back end. So free margin is the amount of money that is left for me to place more trades. So I can still go on and let's say I want to buy uh, AUD USD. I can still go on and come to new order and click on buy or I do anything I want to. But of course you all know, I don't trade any other pay, I only trade GDP USD. So that's another topic from that day. Why I max that just one pay. So equity balance is what I currently have. You already understand that margin level percentage. This margin level percentage must not go below 400%. Else you are going to have margin call. Okay. Else you're going to have margin call. Anyway, depending on the leverage that you have and depending on the, your broker's rule and their regulation. All right. So that's that. So you can see how price is from tweeting. If we are in post blue, this at the top here is going to be blue. If we are negative, it's going to be red. And that's because if price, if price move above this threshold, we are going to be positive. 
but if it drops below, they're gonna be negative. All right, so let's watch how this whole thing play out in the long run. So let me stop sharing and give you the stop loss and take profit because it's really dangerous with trading without stop loss and take profit. So back on our trading view, back on our trading view, I just want to click once and have the value. So for our stop loss, the stop loss is at here, this level. So now go ahead and put the stop loss. I'm going to call it right now. I'm also doing my, I'm adjusting my, the stop loss is 1.38449. 1 1.38449. While the take profit, while the take profit is 1.39500. Now, as to how, how much to use, that's what I'm going to now, the management, risk management, and trade management. Let's go. This is just for practice. Although I'm putting this on my life account, it's just for practice. If you have a demo account, make sure, if you don't have a demo account, use the link in the description box to sign up for a demo account, and that's when you'll be able to place trade uh, with us, all right? So with that said, let me take you to money management, which is the 30%, the management courses. That's really, really important, okay? Let's go. So in doing the money management, I love to go to babypeepscalculator.com. So I'm going to drop the link to as well in the description box. So if you're liking this content, make sure you go on my YouTube and subscribe because I'm going to bring you more of this in no time. So I can see a lot of messages popping up on, on the Zoom call. Just give me a few moments. I'm going to take those questions. So while we are waiting for the money management part to pop up, let me take some questions. Uche says he's in profit already. Now, congrats, man. You're welcome to the blue team. All right, now we have a breakout. What's Unicef for your political plan? That's a different one. I talked about that on my other video. All right, thank you. Thank you for replying. Okay, okay. So I'm in blue already. Thank you about how to add new orders in the current, in the current one. I'm not sure what you mean. Can you talk about how to add new orders in the current one? Yeah, I talked about that. Pressing that add button at the top right corner of your MetaTrader 4, that's to add new order, all right? You select any pair that you want to, adjust the lot size to whatsoever you want, and then you are good to go. I believe that is clear, that's answered. So any more questions? Someone is asking, can we stack position right now? No, this is not the best time to stack position. This is a beginner's class. I'm not gonna talk about stacking position, it's risky. What is the best leverage to use? I explained what leverage is. So depending on the account balance you are, you are funding and the purpose of that account, that should determine what you want to, uh, the leverage you want to put on right there. Okay, while I'm at this, let me check out some comments on YouTube. Let me check my YouTube guys. Can you teach how you master one pair? Yes, I can teach you and I can also teach you how you can master your own personal pair, all right? Not now, actually. So I believe we are good so far. Uh, David is asking on YouTube, do you always use the break and retest on 15 minutes for entry? Um, yes, it's one of my conference. You remember I said I have three conferences, psychological level, trend line, and my chart, my candle chart pattern. Yes, very, very important. Great, thank you very much, guys. I can see a lot of hypes and people are really pumped on the YouTube channel. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you guys subscribe. If you are not yet, subscribe. It's very important to us, okay? Someone saying he doesn't still understand margin. He doesn't understand margin. Emmanuel, he says he doesn't understand margin. Margin is 1% that you, would, let's say for example, you go to the car dealership. You want to buy a car, a Toyota 2020. Yeah, Camry 2020. Then your car dealership is saying, okay, you go bring, um, let's say about $50,000. Hell no, it shouldn't be that expensive, but I don't know the price. Or let's say uh, maybe $30,000. I'm not sure. Let's see, just use the example of $50,000. So you need to deposit 1% of $50,000, okay? 1% of $50,000 is how much? That should be $500, yeah? $500 is your margin. That's a simple definition of margin. Then the 99% that needs to be bring, that, that needs to be put down is uh, leverage, okay? Is is five hundred dollars? Fifty five? I'm not sure. Just one percent. I'm not sure. 
that should be five hundred dollars. Yes, because ten percent is five thousand. So one percent should be five hundred dollars. Thank you. Yeah. I'm not sure for some reason. I'm not sure why my baby peep calculator is not loading up. Let me try another means. So most people are asking for my contact on the YouTube chatting platform. To get my contact, you will have to get into FirePeep, uh, FirePeep package. That one, we get to meet one-on-one -on -one and we discuss, help you to pack, perfect your strategy and all of that. So I don't want to be talking about that right here because I don't intend to sell anything. It's majorly for free. I'm doing it for the love I have for trading and for the love I have for the community here at FirePeep and for the love of YouTube, all right? So if you just want to find out more, just visit firepeepsfx.com. That's if you want to. It's not compulsory because I'm definitely giving out almost everything here for free. Everything for free because we're in free town. Here is free town. All right. So position size calculator. I just noticed something that my camera is actually blue and none of you even mentioned. That's, that's not good. Evil. That's not good. I have no idea why this thing is new. Well, I don't know why it's blue. Maybe I just I just turn that off. I just turn it off. So on on risk management, money management, and trade management stuff. Um, let's get started. Let's say, for example, you are an FTMO for Netrader because that's what I'm preparing people to become. So let's use that example because in no time, every one of you right here, 100 participants on Zoom and 125 participants on my YouTube currently as I'm making, I know thousands and thousands of people will still watch this YouTube recording on a later day. You all, my goal is to move you to become a funded trader with any proprietary firm, whether FTMO, whether the prop firm, whether uh, Trader Central, whether Blue FX, whether any one of them, I want you all to become a proprietary firm and have your financial freedom. You can trade anywhere around the world and make your money every month. So now let's go ahead. Let's see an account balance of hundred thousand dollars. As an FTMO for the trader or as a professional trader, you shouldn't risk more than one percent, but I do zero point five. <coughs> Excuse me. I do 0 0.5. And my base stop loss that I love to use most of the time is 20 people, for example. And of course, I trade GBP USD. I just select GBP USD. So you can go ahead and select any various pair that you want to. But I keep it simple. I just trade just one pair. So and I'll click on I'll, I'll hit on calculate. So what is calculator help you to do? It helps you to tell you the amount of money that will be at risk if you take this trade. And if you are risking this amount of percentage, and if you use the same exact stop loss. So all things being equal, at the end of the day, you are going to lose $500 if this trade will sell. So the loss size you're going to be using is 2.5 loss size. What does that mean? That's 2.5 standard loss size, right? Two standard loss size and 50 mini. So what, how many? How much are you going to be making per each pip movement? This simply means if this trade goes in your favor or it goes against you, on each pip movement, you're going to be making 20, you're going to be making or losing $25. So if it goes 20 people in your favor, you're going to make $500. If you go 40 people in your favor, you're going to be making $1,000. I almost said $5,000. So you're going to be making, <laughs> you're going to be making times two, right? Which is $1,000. Okay. So if it also goes against you, you're going to be losing $500 and um, $1,000 as the case may be. Okay. So that's how this works. And let me show you how to implement that in your real life trading. So first, we having this information. Let me share my screen again. I said I wasn't going to share my screen again. Let me go through that uh, process again. <coughs> now here, since we, we have to use with that, let's say for example, we have a $100,000 account. We have to go to MT4, where's my MT4? Come to MT4, yeah and click on for someone who is asking how to add new order position 
you just click on um now it's pulling down we are currently in it's more negative so just click on let's say for example you want to trade your bps you tap once and go to new order all right here's a param here is the parameter so you are going to adjust this lot size or you put input it manually 2.5 so that is the lot size we are asked to use there use 2.5 lot size so once you click buy of course i can't do this because it's a small account I'll, I'll probably have this account blown because it's just $500 account. Using 2.5 will be suicidal. We only need 20 people to move against us for this account to be good as gone. For most brokers, they are not going to allow you to even place the trade because your margin, depending on your margin, but some brokers, they give one to one limited margin, one to 1,000, one to 2,000. That's crazy. It's too much. It's too much. Anything more than one to 500, in my opinion, is way too much. Once 500 is just fine. One to 200, one to 100 is fine. Even FTM will give one to 100. That's because anyway, the account is huge. Okay. Now, that's how money, money management, you have to be able to learn how to split your risk into piece by piece and you start adding it one after the other. So to learn more on this one, I have a video on that too, on how I stack tricks, how I split my, uh, my positions into different places and I trade. So on risk, make sure you never risk what you can afford to lose. Make sure you never risk what you can afford to lose. Let's say, for example, if you have a $100 account, because I know most of you are right here. I, I just hope most of you are right here. You are not intending to just open with just $100 account. No, do not open with $100 account. And as a matter of fact, there's a challenge that I'm going to be coming up with very real quick, real soon. Let me stop sharing and show my face. Let me explain something. There's a challenge that I want to be bringing up real soon. This challenge, oh, I'm still blue like an avatar. Let me look for a way to change this thing. Sorry, just a second. Whoa, finally. Yeah, that's sorry. So <clears throat> there's a challenge I want to be having very soon with all of you. If you can open an account with BD Suisse, the link in bro with the broker there is BD Suisse, the last link that I'm going to be adding on my on my my YouTube channel and fund with two fifty dollars. I only need minimum of fifteen persons to be able to do this. Minimum of fifteen people. So we are fifteen. I'm going to split. I'm going to categorize everyone into five. Five in a group. Five in a group. So the winner is going to be going on with my cash price. So I'm going to be giving five hundred dollars to the winner. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars to the winners. Just so I'm sure you guys understand what I taught you all today. All right. Just so uh, you guys know what I taught you was today, what I taught you all today. That is what I'm going to be going on, going up with. So if you are starting out, there is a psychology that comes with a small account. Trading a small account, in my opinion, requires a more uh, requires more experience than trading huge account, because in any slightest mistake, a small account can be blown easily. If your position sizing is incorrect small account can be blown. So that's why you see a lot of people blow account and brokers record that more than 90% of Forex traders are losers. They lose money in the Forex market. All right, so in order for you not to be a part of that, you have to make sure you understand how risk work and fund an account that you know you can be able to afford to risk. And when you are risking any trade or whenever you're on any trade, make sure you don't risk all the capital that you're coming in with. Risk only a portion of it, like FTMO and FTMO funded. So because I have $100,000, I'm not going to go in with $50,000 risk. No, I'm going to be going in with 0 0.5, which is just $500. Because I know with $500 risk, in no time, I still would be able to trade in my, if I have four consecutive losses, I still will be able to trade. I'll be fine. Nothing will, nothing will tarnish my psychology. So that's why uh, psychology is key, 60%. All right? You don't have to be emotional. All right? You don't have to be... Uh, uh, irrational when taking uh trades when taking uh making decision in forex market all right so i believe that makes sense so let's head back to our computer screen someone says you have one more question i believe so go ahead with your question do i trade the news no i don't trade the news i don't trade the news i'm a pure technical traders as i mentioned earlier we have types of traders we have technical fundamental so i'm a pure technical trader i don't do news at all all right so let's go on, let's say for example, you want to be risking, you have a hundred dollars account, which I know most of you want to fund with, which is fine. Maybe for a trial, yeah, it's fine. 
hundred dollars account, and in your hundred dollars account, you definitely will not want to risk zero point five percent because it's, it's not even going to make sense. Let's try. Let's calculate that. How much you're going to be losing? If you have zero point five percent on hundred dollars account, you're going to be risking fifty cents if it goes against your 50, 20 pips. And what losses are you going to be using? You're going to be using two nano, and MT four does not allow nano. The minimum MT four allow is micro, one micro. So this is even out of the equation. So if you are coming in with hundred dollar, that simply means you are going to be increasing your risk percentage. Let's say like from to ten percent, yeah, and which is why time as risk. So in raising it to ten percent, you are going to be using zero point zero five. Let's drop that a little bit. Maybe that ten percent is somehow too much. Let's drop it to like seven percent. So that's zero point zero three. Okay, you still have a chance. I want to drop it to the extent you'll be able to use um, zero point zero one. 5% give you 0.02 still. So let's drop to like 3% of your account. Yeah, so 0.01, 3%, risk is 3% per trade, 0.01. And if it moves 20 people in your favor, you're only gonna be making $3. Like, is it worth distress? Is this worth quitting your job for? Or is it worth your time? So that's why you really have to consider coming with a huge, or with a better money that you know you can afford to risk. All this on the line, money that you know you can afford to risk. You can have, it's called risk capital on the line. It's very, very important because most people lose money in the Forex market in the long run. So it is my goal to teach people not to lose money anymore, all right? So with this calculator, position strategy calculator, you'll be able to find out that you are, you are able to predetermine your losses or your wins and make sure you always enforce stop loss. Do not go into any trade without the use of a stop loss. It's suicidal, trust me. We've heard of stories, people committing suicide because they lost a camp. I don't want that to happen, bro. So make sure you always use your stop losses whenever you hop on any trade. So with that said, let's go straight to the psychology. Number one psychology for me is make sure you stay disciplined. Forex market can be easy. Most people say, or they say it's simple. But what makes it simple or what makes you profitable in the long run is discipline, having a plan map out your plan. I've made a video on how you can have a trading plan. So you want to go check that out. Check out your trading plan. Trade, uh, write out your plan and trade the plan. Trade the plan. Like, what is the plan? I already have my trading strategy plan. Let's say, uh, I say, okay, whenever price touches trend line, I'm going to buy and it's close to psychological level. I'm going to buy all of those things. This is a plan. This is a plan. And I have my stop loss right here. So if it comes down to hit my stop loss, I'm fine. It comes, if it goes up to hit my take profit, I'm fine. This is a plan. So you already know what is going to happen even beforehand. So you are in control that way. That's how forest is supposed to be, right? That's how it works. So I have some more questions. Yes. Someone, Ivy, Ivy is asking, he said, someone in Ghana, can someone in Ghana be a part of the challenge? Yeah, you can find, once you find your account with $250, you sign up with BD Swiss Broker. The third is either fourth link in my description box. Once you sign up with that, you are definitely part anywhere, whatever part of the country you may be from, anywhere in the world, anybody can participate. As long as you are a member of my fire people and you are on my YouTube or you are listening to this, you can participate. Yeah, so you have you have to have a training plan. Have a training plan like a trading journal. Like you all can see, this is my trading journal right here. This is one of them. I have a lot of them. I believe you all can see me. Let me stop this. So right here. So you need to have a journal or a board where you have to write all of these things down and you can look at it from time to time and trade the plan, trade the plan. It is very, very important. In the long run, this is what is going to help you to stay profitable, all right? Because you can be very emotional when trades up, when you when you're trying to keep hitting stop losses, stop losses and stop losses, it can be very emotional. It's happened a lot. So we have spent one hour, 30 minutes, Let's get your guys' questions. So if you have any questions, just let me know. You can either raise your hand or just drop it in the chat box. Let me start getting. So I have, already have a lot of questions rolling in. We already have a lot of questions rolling in. It's like there is news. There is news right now. You can see how this kind of just opened. We are currently 2.30. The time is 2.30. Yeah, it's 2.30. And you can see how this kind of is moving really aggressively to the upside. It seems there is news. And for you to check whether there is news or not, you have to go check out your, what's the name? Whoops, forexfactory.com. That's the most popular one, Forex Factory. So to check the news. So now what to check 
the news that is available for this time. It's currently 2.30 and you see how this kind of popped out and start moving up aggressively. All right, moving on my favor. So it's all good, it's sweet, yep. <laughs> news is always very sweet once it's moving in your favor, but once it goes against you, it's, it's like vanguard. Yeah, you can see here, we have CPI, USD. It's affecting USD and we're currently on GDP USD. So hence the reason why charts are moving. So it's, this is currently 2.30. 230 on Forex factory and USD. And we are yet to see what the outcome, the actual outcome is. Let me explain something real quick on this news. For those who want to learn how to trade news, let me just explain. But it's not advisable for beginners, please. If you're a beginner, do not. Let me just, for the sake of education, let me explain. Now, if you are opening trade Forex factory for the first time, you are definitely going to have instant time as your default setting. So to change that, you want to click on this date uh, time here and go change that in the settings, all right? So with that said, whoa, I clicked on that mistakenly and it's taking me there. Let's hold up a second. While we are waiting, let me see some questions. When the price is below the psychological level and on the trend line, is it returns to go long? Is it good entering at that moment or wait till it's move above the psychological level before entering? And you can enter based of price rejection. It's all about how candles react at those level. It's not about whether it's before or after the psychological level, it's how can this price react. If I have multiple weeks rejection on my psychological level, I'm definitely going to go long or go short, depending on my analysis, all right? So you can see the times when I'm on, I'm on GMT plus one. All right, so you can just tweak that to whatever time zone you are on. So let's head back to our, now you can see how the chart, now we are already in a very massive profit. This is the trade that we took. I took this trade right now and you can see I'm already in profit. We are in profit really good. So press Ctrl T to see the profit I'm on. Ctrl T. So I'm currently in $5 profit. That's because I'm using 0 0.02. So imagine I'd use two standard lot size. I'll be in, let's say like, uh, should it be $500 now? $500 in profit right now. $500 in profit. All right. So that's how it works. If I've used uh, 0 0.2, that's 20 mini. I'll be in $50 in profit. So that's how it works. I'm not saying you should use bigger loss like this. I'm just explaining how it works for the sake of <laughs> for the sake of education. So I really have to start keep emphasizing that so you guys know that I'm not suggesting anything that you should go aggressive. All right. So back to the news. How news work? Let me explain the interface, right? Come on, what is this thing? Okay. So this first bar, this column right here shows displays, display dates. And this is today, March 10. And this is the date, March, uh, Wednesday, March, all of those things. And this is the timing. So you can see as of, since my time changed, okay, 2.33. It's still, sync, it's still trying to synchronize. It's showing 4 p.m. right here. I don't have idea what's happening. <laughs> Let me go out and come back here. Forex factory. So you can see we have an aggressive move to the upside. So that's how trading works. That's how it works. It's super, super straightforward. But you definitely will get now. Here's the information I've been released. You notice a while ago, we don't have this data. But now the data has been released. Let me explain. This folder right here, first, this determines the currencies. So this one, AUD, simply means it's going to affect, this news is going to be released on AUD, CNY, EUR, USD, CAD, and all of that. So this is affecting USD. Because we are trading GPP USD, that's why it's currently affecting our trades. And if you want to see more details on it, you just click on this small folder to see more details and read what has happened or history about the particular thing, all right? Another thing you also see, you see actual. Actual is what exactly, this is for macroeconomist forecast. They must have done their forecast and all of those things. So actual is what happened during the release of this news. Why forecast? Forecast is always there. It's done by the experts which is responsible. And the one that is responsible for this one is Forex Factory, of course. They may get it from some feeds or from some from source somewhere. We don't know, all right? So the previous, what happened when this thing happened back in time, it was 0 0.3 percentage. And what they are focusing is 0 0.4 percentage. And what they actually, what happened is the same thing as what they forecasted. So that makes it bad for USD. So since the news is not so favorable to USD, which is what you are seeing right here, is negative on USD. So GBP USD has to go up. Remember, if it is not favorable to, if it's negative on USD, if you are buying GBP USD, that simply means we are buying pounds and we are selling 
the quote, which is USD. All right. Now, if you go to USD card now, USD card is going to be going bearish. It's going to be going down because the news does, did not favor USD. So yes, if you are selling USD Canadian dollar, that is, you are selling USD and you are buying card. That's what it simply means. So it's, sometimes it can be really confusing when you are just starting now. So that's that on the news explanation. Then this is the graph that represent for previous history and all of that, all those long stories. All right, I believe you guys understand on the fundamental. So that's just me touching a little bit on the fundamental aspect. Yeah, without further ado, let's head straight to more of questions. I can see more questions popping up. Thank you, man. So when do you go break and all of the, someone is asking really important question. When do you go break even on train on trades? Yes, it's really a very good time for us to break even. Let me show my screen one more time. It's really a very good time for us to break even. What is break even? Break even is a time when you move your stop loss into a small profit. So no matter, regardless of what happened, you are no longer going to lose your money, no matter what happens. So this trade that I, I had a new position when I, when this trade was retracing down, that's when I added new position. I forgot to mention for the guy that was asking, should we stack? You don't stack when trade is moving in your favor. You stack when you are in trouble. Like you don't buy when like people were buying Bitcoin when Bitcoin was already at fifty thousand. I was just laughing. You don't buy when things are booming. You buy when there is problem. When there is calamity, that's when you buy, right? That's a secret that most people most people don't really know. So when it's dropping, when it's coming against you, when you are still sure of your analysis, that's when you should be getting, you should be buying more of that. <clears throat> like right now, Bitcoin is in its all highs. You shouldn't be buying. You should just be watching, waiting for a crash, and then you buy. That's when you take opportunity. When people are, when people are being fearful, that is when you should be taking opportunity. All right? So when this guy was dipping right here, yeah, right at this point, that's when I was hopping on. That's when I hopped on one more position. Where's my stylus? Yeah, that's when I was opening one more positions, right? One more position right here. So it's keep moving to the upside. So talking about break even, break even is an, is an act where I move this my stop loss here. So you remember the stop loss level is here. So what the stop loss simply means is if price does opposite of what I'm expecting to do, let's say I'm, I'm saying it should buy, but if it doesn't buy, it's trying to sell, it to get to this point, it should cut me out at this mass, mass, this uh, loss limit. That's what this stop loss means. So what break even simply means is me moving this my stop loss into a small profit so no matter what happened if this trade retraces a little it will hit me at, at this stop loss so i have nothing to lose that is capital protection and one rule of thumb in trading is as you are coming in with the forex in forex market is number one rule is make sure you protect your capital with all that you've got in you all the strength that you've got protect your capital by all means that is what break even means so but right now to answer your question i'm not going to break even right now because it's not enough it's not enough space so chances are still high that this trade may still reverse a little and kill this break even prematurely and after killing it and head straight up so it's still so premature so i want to like give some breathing space i could use that based on candlestick reaction or i could just do that maybe like once you move 20 pip or 20 pip in my favor yeah i break even that's how that works so i believe i've said a lot and i've given out enough content today i i just hope you guys find value in what i just gave you guys and Make sure you guys spread the word. Invite people to the Telegram channel because I'm going to be having this um, on and on and on and on and on. So if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with me or let's like one-on-one -on -one trading, you want us to just trade together, you can go do that on my website, all of those things, yeah? And, and there are times that I could just, oh, I'm in this area, let's hang out together. If you're in that area, and you can just meet me up too. So that also works too. Uh, that's just how it all works. So. Thank you, thank you. How do you how to participate? How to participate in what? What do you mean by participate? In what in what sense? Please, can you just ask the question? Freda, you're asking a question, a very nice question. What do you mean by participate? Yeah, someone is asking me a question. Okay, so let, let's get let's get some questions. Uh, let me get some questions right here. <clears throat> Some comments on the live chat on my YouTube. My Telegram link. I'm going to include it in my description box right now. I'll include it in the description box. Well, someone is asking for a Telegram link. So let me drop the link right here on, on here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just dropped the link right there. So you can just go check that out. I just checked out. I just dropped it on YouTube. So that's the Telegram link. You can join straight ahead. Just click on the link and to take you directly to that. So let me drop my Telegram link right here too on for those who are here. So guys, see you in the next video. Make sure you guys always show some love on my Instagram. Go follow me at Jeffrey Benson. This is my Instagram, guys. This is my Instagram. So go follow me at Jeffrey Benson and so you get more of my updates, more. Yeah, this is my Instagram. So go follow guys, go follow, go follow, go follow, go follow. So that's the link to the Telegram channel. I just dropped it here too. Whoa. I, I believe I did that wrongly. Thank you, man. Thank you for following, guys. I can see a lot of people are following already. Thank you. So guys, thank you for coming around. I appreciate you all for coming and make sure you keep the fire burning and keep learning. Never stop learning, never stop gaining new knowledge. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Whoa, Mr. Desmond, thank you. <laughs> it was cited. Miracle, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye, guys.